how do you see things evolving differently in the psychedelic space in Europe versus North America? I find it very interesting, at least on a cultural level, that Germany is a hotbed for the psychedelic movement. You know, Christian and Lars and Florian and Natai and Compass, a lot of that is born out of Germany, which is a culture that if you said pick any cultural in the world that would be a hotbed for psychedelic activity, German Germany would probably be number three or four on the most unlikely, just in terms of gross generalizations, but it doesn't f- seem to fit culturally. So I guess there's two questions in there, which is first is, do you think there's a reason it's happening, it happening in Germany in particular? Uh, and secondly, how do you see it evolving differently in Europe versus North America? I mean, that's an interesting question with Germany because I feel like um, the need for, I'm going to just say, like, I think the need for healing is a very big one and it's kind of coming out now. So, because I remember, like, let's say, I mean, obviously, because the whole, because of the whole Nazi time but even before before the nazis there was a very heavy history in germany and i remember like you know the great psychiatrist the hans from hans van wechem like who was also at field trip and he he said to me whenever he had german clients coming in like 90 percent of these clients had at one point in the trip a very heavy and like really strong kind of heaviness around them that they needed to kind of leave behind them. And I think that this is really one of the reasons why Germany has this need and and interest. I mean, it's really like a lot of German people getting in touch and saying like, I want to go to Amsterdam, where, where, yeah, what should I do? What should I pay attention to? And not a single Italian person so far. <laughs> and then also no French people because they would be really, I'm not saying how I feel, period. So, but Germans really are really looking into this now. So, and, and microdosing is all over Berlin. Like German television has now a, like almost like you feel like every two or three weeks there's something about psychedelics now, ketamine, like it's, it's really out there right now. And I think it must have something to do with that because it's really not enough anymore to just say, oh, um, Auschwitz was liberated on January 27th. Great. So let's move on. So something is kind of coming to the surface. And I know it's still hard to say this or talk about this in, in the way that people would say like, yeah, but that's all kind of bullshit. But just listen to Gabo Mate and you will understand what I'm talking about. Because he can explain it much better than I do. But so the way he talks about it is, I mean, this is exactly, I think, what is happening right now. How how people start to, especially Germans, start to feel this past in them in one way or the other. And in Europe, second part of your question, how is this different in Europe? I think what's interesting you can see now in, in um, very different European countries, like obviously England, let's say it's Europe. Like England, Germany, Switzerland, the whole like Scandinavian area like Sweden, Denmark, um, even Oslo has really a very, very interesting and kind of recently accelerating psychedelic scene or like even research scene. So like you mentioned ICPR and this is like the, let's say the European Horizons Conference. It's a rather on, on the on the science side or not not so much on the let's say business side and i mean i was there the first time also like like it was last year and it's really interesting how every country now kind of starts to to contribute to this kind of overall general idea that europe in europe you should be able to have um psychedelic therapy and in Germany, it's really interesting also that, let's say, a lot of people asked me recently about, like, yeah, I heard about this ketamine, where can I do it? And let's say if you Google ketamine Frankfurt, you would have five doctors. Ketamine Hamburg, five doctors. But nobody really knows about it, So, but it is there. So, And I think one of the things in, in Europe is that, I mean, 
America has, of course, already like way more media and way more articles about it. But I think Europe is still in need of more communication about it outside of the scientific sector. And coming quickly back to Soho House, because we started in was it January, we started at the Berlin Soho House like a week, like a monthly um, psychedelic conversation coming from very different angles. Like in January, we had Patrick Cox as a guest who was um, Canadian of Toronto a really famous shoe designer who got into 5-MeO-DMT and helped himself to not kill himself. I mean, what's what he says. So, And so we had like 100 people coming to this event just wanting to know about the toad, which Patrick knows very well to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so, uh, and it's really interesting that these live, now that we're coming back to live events or to people really coming physically into a place, you can see that so many people in Europe is, are really, really starting to, for many different reasons, to really want to look into this. And our first event uh, outside of Berlin is uh, on February 28th in Paris, the first event in Paris about psychedelics in the new kind of the third wave, basically. 